Hello, Oscillate Sync here, and welcome to the first episode in a series where we're going to be building patches from scratch on the Korg MicroKorg 2. Yes, indeed, the MicroKorg 2 is finally out. And if you're watching this video on the day that I'm releasing it, uh, you will already, I'm sure, have been crushed under the weight of a thousand embargo drop videos. So I'm not going to do a demo or review. Instead, I'm going to go back to kind of the roots of what this channel sort of started as. And I'm going to do a whole series of patch building videos for the MicroKorg 2 because I think that's one of the best ways for you to kind of get to know and understand the synthesis architecture of this instrument. Before we actually get into the patch in the interests of transparency, uh, Korg sent me this instrument for free, um, although not to make videos on it. I've actually had it since near the start of this year because I worked on the factory patches for this instrument, which was an amazing opportunity. Um, and I'll maybe talk about that in another video. Um, so this isn't a sponsored video um, because that's not why I have this instrument, but it just for transparency's sake, there is a relationship between me and Korg as far as this instrument goes. So whatever pinch of salt needs to be scattered across anything I say, feel free to apply that. Okay, so for this first patch today, I'm going to start from the bottom and make my way up. So to speak, um, we're going to do a bass sound to begin with. So we're going to aim for this sort of like classic three oscillator west coast kind of bass sound. A little bit funky, nice and expressive, a little bit dirty perhaps. Um, yeah, and just a, a nice vibe to it. So um, let's start by initialising the patch here. Like that, so just function and that button there, and then press execute. There's the initialise patch there. And before I do anything else, I'm just going to come into the voice here. And here on the poly mono mode, I'm going to set this to mono retrigger. So it's just a mono uh, synth sound now, and it, it means we can just play it in the mono synth kind of way, which is what I want for this patch. Now, as I'm building different patches, I start looking at different parts of the synth. So if this is like a pad, I'd probably start off by sort of getting that envelope working first so we kind of had that vibe. But for these kind of bass sounds, it's all about the kind of the basic timbre and tone of the oscillators for me. So that's where we're going to start. And we're going to do the classic. We're going to have two sawtooth waves uh, detuned from one another and then a sub oscillator, probably a square wave, although we might try triangle as well. Probably a square wave though. So on the initialized patch, oscillator one is already a sawtooth wave, so we don't have to do anything other than just slightly detune it. I'm just gonna bring it down by mm, maybe nine cents. We'll see how it sounds when we bring in the other one. So um, at the moment, I can't do anything to oscillator two because it's not in the mix. So if I just click on the mixer button here, make sure we're on the mixer mode here, and we can turn up oscillator two and straight away. You know, we're hearing that richness between those two sawtooths and it's all about trying to get that richness that we can then dial down and have the filter work with. So let's... Like, I don't want like the really obvious fast beating, but just like kind of chorusing between the two. That's probably more or less where we want it. So let's bring oscillator three in as well. I will come back here in a minute and probably add a bit of noise once we've worked out what the filter's doing, because I like that kind of attack to it. But let's get the oscillators in place first. So that's oscillator three on the go there. Let's set it over to a square wave. And then the all important, drop it down 12 semitones to give us that one octave below sub oscillator. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's basically it. Um, in later videos, we're really going to dig into some of the stuff that these oscillators can do because they can do a ton of different stuff, but it's all about the classic stuff on this patch. Let's drop us down an octave. Yes. 
Yes. That's just a good sound. Uh, okay, um, let's get that filter involved. So um, coming on to the filter page here. The filter on the um, MicroCorg 2 is morphing. So you can go from various different low passes, band passes, high passes. For this one, I think it's probably going to be the four pole low pass. That's, and that's, that's basically the sound, right? Somewhere in there. A little bit of resonance, not too much. Just so we get that kind of vocally growl on it. Go away, fly. I'm making bass sounds. It's probably a little bit too much. About there. Yeah. The nice thing here is that this resonance doesn't kind of rob the bottom end, so we can push it as hard as we want to. I don't want to go like super, super resonant. Uh, one thing, go away, fly. Um, one thing I want to do, because it's going to be quite a dark sound, I think, is just make sure we've got a bit of key tracking set here. So this is just going to open up the filter as you go up the keyboard and lower it as you go down, just so that you kind of get an even response, because if I went up an octave now, like, there's barely any sound coming out. So we can just... I don't need much. I certainly don't need 100% or anything. But just so you can still play it up here, with it's sort of... Yeah. So the other thing that we've got here is this drive control, and this is kind of essential on, uh, on this filter, and it gives you such a nice character to the sound if you want to get something a little bit more growly, especially with a lower cutoff, so... Kind of hear it there, it's starting to get a little unruly. And by there it's like... If we just draw that back down. Polite filter. Sort of rumbly, growly. We don't need that much, I think. Just listen to where it kind of kicks in. It's about there. Lovely stuff. Yeah, that'll do. So let's get our amp and filter envelope generators on the go. We'll start with the amp here. Uh, I want to bring the sustain down, but not to zero. I don't want it to be like a plucky sound. I want to be able to hold notes out. The filter's going to be doing a lot of work here. So we just need enough there to kind of get us an obvious attack. Bit of release. Not tons. There's going to be a lot of C minor playing. Sorry. It's where my hand goes and I'm not a very good keyboardist, so... Cool. We could add some velocity response here, but... It's cool, but I think I probably want to get that response out of the filter instead. So that quieter sounds are kind of duller. So... I might come back there, but I'm going to leave that at zero for now, I think. So coming into the filter EG, we can turn up the intensity here, so that will open up the filter with the envelope. It's basically that, isn't it? Little bit of a tech. 
Metal Funk. Yeah. Uh, Release-wise, with these kind of patches, I would always suggest having the release longer than the amp one. Just so that it's still moving by the time that you can't hear it anymore. If I set this quick, you can kind of hear that, like, the end of the note sounds lame. But it does to me anyway. So I want that longer. So we're not at the lowest point by the time the amp envelope's closed off. Not that much funk. Cool. So I mentioned that I wanted to get that kind of expressiveness with the filter via velocity, and to do that we'll come into the V patch, and this is our mod matrix. It's only six slots on the microcorg, so you have to be a little bit conservative with what you're doing, although you do have the two layers so you can layer things up. Uh, so um, as it happens on a um, initialized patch, this is actually set up uh, already, uh, but I want to set it up from scratch just so I can show you what it looks like. So um, we'll call this a free slot. It's currently not connected to anything, so we'll connect it. So that enables this particular slot. Uh, and on the mod matrix on the microcorg, you get these two sources. And so like source one is the main one, and then you can multiply it by source two. So that's how you would do, for example, uh, mod wheel uh, controlling the depth of an LFO. So you would have the LFO in one, the mod wheel in the other, and then your destination is whatever it is. Uh, we don't need this for this one. So what we want is velocity plus. So that means it's going to add to the current amount. Our destination is going to be filter, not filter cutoff, because that's just going to open up in general. And what we want is the filter, e.g. In, intensity, that's what we want. And um, what we're going to want to do um, before we set this, just come back to our filter, e.g. and set the intensity back to the minimum that it was. So it was on 18. Two's probably the, the least that we would want. So we'll come in here and we'll add on, it was 18, so we'll add 16 on. We could probably afford to make the overall filter a bit darker. And then make the intensity slightly higher. Okay, um, while we're in here, I'm just going to set one other thing here. Ah, this was the one that was sort of preset there. There's a source called analog, which is like a slow moving, smooth random. Uh, and you can read it to anything that you just want to kind of move a bit over time. Um, so just to make this patch a little bit more alive, I'm just going to come in here and oscillator one. to analog. And that's basically assigned um, some oscillator drift uh, to that um, oscillator. Which just means that each note is a little bit different. Now I want to get a bit more sizzle in this. So I'm going to come into the mixer here and turn up the noise. I only really want to hear it on the attack. And we can fine tune the noise a little bit as well. There's uh, a low pass filter 
high pass filter, band pass filter um, version of the noise. So if you want to take out some of the rumble from the noise and just get the sizzle. I kind of want it to sound like it's noise. Perhaps we'll go with the low pass instead. It really does add quite a lot, so that's without. Nice. So I'm currently not doing anything with the LFOs apart from what's pre-rooted, so again, one of the things that's in the initialized patch. You have got um, LFO 1 via mod wheel going to the pitch. But I kind of don't, I don't really want this to wobble, I don't think, so I might get rid of that. Um, we could maybe get like a wob, 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 wob instead. Would that be good? Let's change the destination here to the filter cutoff. Where are we? There we go. So uh, this is LFO1 going via the mod wheel. It's too much if, it, if we're doing it. Hmm. I don't know. It's not jumping out at me. What if instead... Okay. What if instead we just went mod wheel to fail to cut off? And we could like... And just have it as like a... Expression control for the filter. I think that's way more useful, isn't it? Yeah, let's have that. A uh, quick experiment while I'm thinking about it. Let's just try uh, different wave shapes here. Let's try a triangle. Doesn't have the same growl. Sine wave. octave sub octave instead head over into the EQ and effects. So let's start with the EQ. So hold down on off and turn on the EQ and come in here and affect things. So there's a, basically a shelving EQ here and we could boost our low end if we wanted. So we've got the cutoff frequency and or rather the shelving frequency and a gain control which is how much boost we're applying. Let's just check the levels, make sure I'm not overdriving anything. I think what I'll do is I'll just... find the point where... Is that the lowest that I'm like, want to play? So that G is probably about the limit of the fidelity here. So I'm going to sweep up the low frequency until like we just start to hear at 
potential low end about there. So you don't want to muddy out those lower mids as well. So it's doing quite a lot on the bottom end there. And if I thought like the high end was a bit bright, I could bring it down. I think it's okay. It... Yeah. So in terms of effects, the thing that I would usually go for on something like this would maybe be like a stereo chorus. Although I'm not set on that. So again, on off and tap mod, turn it on. Okay, that's mad. That's... And we have two pages here, width does not need to be that high. So we don't need to like blow out the stereo. What? That's fun. That is fun. And if, like, in terms of like what this sound was being used for, if it was like something where the bass is quite up front and like a sort of sparser kind of arrangement. Takes some of the low end out of the actual chorus. That might work. At the manual control, um, adjust the initial um, uh, delay, so generally speaking lower manual gives you more of a flangey sound and you kind of get seasick towards the top here and more sort of like almost slapbacky. somewhere in the middle it's a nice chorus sound that's an option but I wonder about making this dirtier instead. So in the mod section here, we also have, uh, over here, we have distortion. Let's turn down the output, make sure we don't. That's too much.
That's interesting. The other thing we get in the distortion here, instantly is like this um, mid-range control. Which I don't know if it's flat. But it's quite like a resonant. A resonant filter, and I think it drives into the distortion as well. So you can really define the character of a sound with this. Sort of chewy and glottal. Or oh, more sort of rattly. Uh, unfortunately, this control is not available on the V patch, at least not on this version of the firmware. Otherwise, I would be modulating it. So without... Yeah, it sounds boring without it now. It's the EQ. The bottom end holds together a bit more without it, but I kind of like the... Well, we could also just boost the low end some more, couldn't we? But if we did want the chorusing and the width, we could use unison. Let's use unison. Yes, let's. So, just two voices of unison. Make sure it's not too loud. A little bit louder. So that's two voice unison, but at the moment that is detuned, but not spread. Hello. That's too much. Is that too much? That might be too much. Do we go to three voice? We might go to three voice. Then we still have something down the middle. Now we've got that unison, that noise is too obvious. We'll just bring it down a bit. Is three too many? <laughs> it might. I think three is too many. I think two is better. Wider. Oh goodness. Three voices now. It's wider. That's too big for practical basses, but that does sound fun. It's too much 
boost on the low end. That's far too big. <laughs> oh God. No, two voices. And not as wide. I mean, that's kind of like a, a feature base, like in reality. That's probably more the play in most cases. But this is very fun. Yeah. Save. We'll call that a patch. Well, I hope you found that interesting, our first deep dive into building a patch on the Korg Micro Korg. If you did enjoy the video, of course, it would be massively appreciated if you could leave this video a like and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you're interested in more Micro Korg videos, because I'm going to do a bunch of them, basically, until I get bored and I like making patches. I've made over 60 patches on this so far, so not going to run out of steam anytime soon uh, we'll do some which are kind of classic stuff we'll do some which are weird we'll do some stuff where we're sort of messing with the oscillators a bit more with the mod matrix a bit more got an idea for possibly the next episode where we do a different kind of baseline but one that's sort of interacting with the arpeggiator a bit anyway lots of ideas um yes uh, a like and a subscribe is massively appreciated um Especially now I'm sort of getting back to the sort of bread and butter roots kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I think that's everything. Um, so thank you for joining me as we explore the Korg Micro Korg 2. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.